1982 All Ireland, I suppose we were going for five in a row at that time, and uh, which hadn't been done. I think Spikes was the last team to do that, so it was a long time since it was done, and it probably would have been the Crumley Road team, I suppose, to, to achieve that. Uh, there was a lot of expectation there that year. Um, but as players, I don't think we felt any pressure really. We were closer to Kerry in '81, and the public gave us credit for it. it, it kind of went on notes to close from where we we we'd curved the forwards for the first time. So we spent the whole season planning for it, and we knew we really, really believed we were going to win that match. I mean, it's just, uh, people find that hard to believe because Kerry was such a powerful force at the time. I always remember we coming out of training on the Thursday before the game. And uh, there was some guy outside selling five and t shirts. Now we had no control over that. We didn't want that. And people were saying, make sure now that you're down in Steam on Monday night, you know, with the cup and all this. Like, I mean, but the players were, were, were knew we had a job to do, but we didn't have any control on how people were, were thinking. I can remember we were just going out on the field, ready to take the field, and, and Eugene was standing at the door. And he just stopped us and he said, Right, lads, today it's going to be history. Kerry Red are going to make history. And we remember for that, or we were going to stop them, and we'll be remembered. So it's over to you. We were very happy with how the game went. I think it was uh, in close contention at halftime, which was a couple of points ahead. A crucial point during the second half, obviously, was Kerry missed a penalty. I would have been quite happy to step aside, but there were no volunteers coming to take it, you know. So unfortunately, I took it and didn't particularly strike it well. With seven minutes to go, I was brought in as a sort. As it happened, we were down four points, and uh, we got it back to three. They went back four again, but we got two frees then and we got down to two again. So with time taken away, um, Eugene McGee did tell me going in this. Myself and Matt Connor, if we either was got a chance for a shot at goal, we were down to go. Two minutes left in the game. Kerry leading by two points. And it looks as if they were winning the way they ought to be. Van Ayer just diddling and dawdling there. And here they come. This is Liam Connor, the fullback. A high, lovely, dropping ball in towards the goal. A shot. A goal. A goal. A goal for Offaly. There was a goal in the game. A very important factor in relation to this goal incident was that we took off the right half forward, John Guinan. And he was being marked by Tommy Doyle, who was playing left half back, obviously. And as was the custom at the time, when the sub came on, the man whose, player, whose opponent had been taken off picked up the sub. So Tommy Doyle automatically picked up Seamus Darby and followed him. And that meant that Tommy Doyle suddenly found himself playing right full back, where he had never played in his life. Of course, the debate was centred on whether Seamus Darby pushed Tommy Doyle or not. The referee I've spoken to, Mr McGrath from County Mayo, has said, no, absolutely not. Perfectly legitimate goal. When the final whistle goes, uh, you know, people are in the field and people are going mad over there and crying. And it's, uh, it kind of gets to you, and it's, then it's a bit of a disbelief for a while. Oh dear, what a game! What a game! That is one of the most sensational finals I have ever seen. Well, for me personally, I got back down to water and didn't leave it for about six to eight weeks I was so down after it actually because we put so much into that and we were hoping that we would certainly have won that one. When we got back to Tullamore and Monday night I can tell you that we, we, we achieved something very special.